Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. Well, today's video might blow your mind. It's a subject that I have recently found so interesting and done a little bit of research on it. Nanny is in her teacher mode, and I suppose I'm going to take you into Biology 101, and we're going to learn what zombie cells in our bodies are and how they affect aging. Now, if you think you might want to learn more about zombie cells and aging well, stay tuned. Now, who is old enough to remember the zombie movies of the 19, late 1950s? Would it be? No, it was earlier, maybe even 1940s when TV first came out and all we could see on TV was cowboy movies and zombie movies. Boris Karloff and his zombies. The zombie was living, but almost dead. Well, guess what? We, as human beings, every single one of us, have zombie cells living within our whole body. Now, the scientific name for zombie cells, although they refer to zombie cells in all the references, so if you ever want to look up zombie cells, you'll see it. They're called senescent cells. Okay, you're probably saying at this point, okay, Nanny, what's the deal with the cells? Why do we have to know about zombie cells? And what does this have to do with aging? Well, I'm going to tell you now. And this is the fascinating part. When we're born, we have one cell that divides and multiplies. The next goes, the next, the next. And it goes to the point where by the time you're probably middle age, you have 37 trillion cells within your body. You have good, healthy cells, but you also have a huge amount of these zombie cells. And it's a lot easier for me to say zombie cells than senescent cells. All through our body, we have all kinds of cells. We have cells within our brain, within our heart, within our kidneys. We have skin cells. And by the way, these are the easiest ones to get rid of the zombie cells. Zombie cells are those dead cells that you exfoliate. Now we can handle this exterior type, but we have to work on all those cells that are in all the organs in our body, trillions and trillions of them. And the zombie cells kind of get to the point where there's just, they're dead. Not really, they're living, but they're there. And the good cells try and stay healthy, but they need our help, your help and my help, to be able to let them do their job, which is keeping your kidney healthy, keeping your heart healthy, keeping your brain active. And we have to do certain things. In 1961, a man by the name of Leonard Hayflack did started doing, I think he was a biologist, <clears throat> And he wanted to do some study on aging, reversing or slowing down the aging process. And he started to do some little experiments. And he found that within our bodies and within the bodies of mice, which he was working with at the time, there's all these millions and trillions of these zombie cells or dead cells. They're not really dead, they're still living. So they can have an effect on the good cells. They can leak and damage more cells. Everyone called him an idiot because he came up with a hypothesis that if you flushed as many of these zombie cells out of your body, the healthy cells could keep multiplying and keep you much healthier and almost reverse aging. That was the exciting part of this. 30 years later, or 20 years later, a man by the name of Jan Van Dersen, who worked at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, wanted to follow up 
on Hayflex research. So he started to do experiments and found that there was so much truth in what Hayflex was trying to do that it was worth going ahead with this. Well, I'm gonna forward it to now because you don't need to know any more biology. Trying to bring this down to a level that I can understand it and you can understand it. What they decided to do was to keep this theory going. Now, at one point, there was never enough money for research on anti-aging. There were other things that people wanted to work on. But at this point today, there are 12 drugs, drug companies that are actually working on this anti-aging or reversing aging or halting aging. They feel we might be um, maybe a few years away from getting this. Now, they're, they're all working on a drug that we could start taking at some point. It will improve arthritis, pain. It will um, slow the development of, of any heart problems. It will work on your brain and keep your brain like... So in other words, we wouldn't have to work as hard, but um, it's it just blows my mind to think about something like this. So... What are we gonna do in the meantime? Hang on, and I'm gonna tell you. Until someone gets that drug to flush all those zombies out of our systems and reverse aging or halt it, and they're so excited about this, there's things that we have to do to let those cells do their job. Now, you all might be saying, why do I have to know all this? Why, why can't we just keep using products and various other things to work on ourselves? Well, those products are fine, they're great, but they're taking care of your outer body. Sometimes they, they are definitely certain serums and, and things that you use do help. But this is, is I, I compare it to um, finding the vaccine for smallpox and polio, this is a real, is going to be a real breakthrough. Now, there are certain people who have put some drugs on the market now. They're not FDA approved and they're not um, uh, clinically approved, but there are people who are putting out anti-aging drugs. But, but this is a very exciting time to... Um, especially for you people that are in your 40s and 50s, and of course the young people, this will be wonderful. I, I, I think about that movie that Brad Pitt made where his body started reverse aging, that as he grew, he grew older, he got younger looking. Um, that, that's not gonna happen exactly like that. But when these drugs are approved and this breakthrough comes, and I know right now it sounds like pie in the sky, and I would have thought it too if I hadn't read all this research on this. So there are things that you are going to want to do right now, especially those of you maybe in your 40s or 50s, because we're, we're being programmed to live longer because of scientific advances and medical advances. People are living longer, happily, and, and in better shape. Now, there's still all the arthritic and the, the catastrophic illnesses that come, but, but this particular research is, is just going to be amazing. So now there's things that we can do to help this to age well. Now we're not in the reverse or the halting aging yet stage. Hopefully that will come down the line. You know, when you think of all the things that have happened, let, let me just say in my life alone, uh, there was, when I was a child, there was no TV. Um, and even as I grew older, we didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones. My mother didn't was alive without airplanes. My father uh, got around his town in horse and buggy. Now, airplanes, think of the things that have happened in this world that you never ever 
landing on the moon, being up in space. This can happen, my friends. This can really happen. So you have to do the best job that you can right now to keep your body ready for this advancement in cellular biology and it's so real. So I'm going to tell you right now. All right. So teacher nanny is ready to give you another lesson. I hope you haven't left me yet because this is exciting. You've heard all these eight ways before. Eight ways to keep your body and keep your cells doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. That's that's what we have to do right now. Maybe 84 nanny, I don't know, but the rest of you you can do this. All right. Number one of all things on a cellular level that you should be avoiding, can you guess? Sugar. Sugar is probably the worst thing you can put in your body. Really. Of course, smoking. Drinking in moderation. All right, we've gotten that out of the way. Now, you have to keep the skin in, in good condition. And that you're going to be doing with sunscreen and a hat. I think I showed you a hat that I had bought that has 98% uh, of the ultraviolet rays um, that keep the sun from getting on your face. And sunglasses. I wore sunglasses winter, summer, even in the snow from the time I was in my 20s. I wore sunglasses the whole time we were in Scotland. Mainly, um, what they do is they prevent you from squinting all the time. There's nothing, nothing wrong with wearing sunglasses all the time. And I think perhaps they might have helped me. Another thing that helped me, for some reason or other, I remember when I was in my early 20s, Musa and I had just gotten married, and they came out with these um, sodas that didn't have sugar in them, diet drinks. And I don't know why I, I was not aware of the zombie theory at that point or sugar, but I stopped drinking sodas with sugar. And I don't think since I was in my early 20s that I have had a, a can of soda that was a regular can of soda. And part of the problem was sometime in my 40s, I saw a demonstration of someone who took sugar. Now, mind you, in every can of soda that's not diet, there are 14 to 16 teaspoons full of sugar. Can you believe that? Now, could you shovel 14 to 16 teaspoons of sugar in your mouth? I couldn't. Anyway, what he did was he took 14 teaspoons of sugar, put them in a, a small pot on a stove, and he heated the sugar up. And it turned to black, slimy, look like, I don't know what. So those are important. Sugar, smoking, the sun, and um, drinking in moderation. All right, now eating. We've all learned everything that we could possibly learn about eating. The idea is to eat well. Avoid a lot of the bad things. Now this is, we're working on our cells now, remember. We're trying to let those cells in our body do their job. Um, this is this is hard. Um, you know the good foods, plant-based, um, and I'm not gonna call them diets. Just find out the good things that are good for your body and, and try and enjoy them. Um, there are things also, uh, probiotics and things like sauerkraut and kimchi and kefir that are so good for you. I love all that. I have eaten it and I, I didn't know it years ago when I started eating all that stuff, yogurt. Um, but then I found out it's good for your body. So um, the big thing I would say is sugar. So try and do that. Now, these, these things, of course, your mind, you have to keep your brain going. And that's with hobbies. We all have to have hobbies and connection with family and friends 
this is all part of the social being, the spiritual being, you know what your bodies consist of. So let me see if I've hit them all. Uh, exercise. Um, we've we've been told so much about exercise. Now, the theory is you really don't have to lift weights and all that. You can, and if you want to build up various parts of your body. But for cellular advancement, all you have to do is 15 to minutes to 30 minutes of cardio exercise per day. They claim that the cardio exercise is more beneficial than any other. I like the stretching also. Another uh, very beneficial um, thing to do for your cellular development to keep your cells in good shape is intermittent fasting. We've learned a lot about that through the keto diet, I think. And and all that means, you can do it on several, several ways if you want. You can skip a whole day of, of solid foods or you can do it the easy way. Um, Moose and I started having two meals a day um, quite a while ago since we've been retired. And because Moosey gets up later than I do, I get up about 6.30 and by the time Moose is ready for breakfast, it's usually 9.30 or 10. And we don't have lunch, but we have an early dinner at four or five. So we, we don't eat from let's say five o'clock, maybe a piece of dark chocolate at night. Now they say dark chocolate is okay for your sweet tooth once in a while. And they have some wonderful, um, these bars of 72%, 65% chocolate. They're delicious. And keep your connections with your family, your friends, stay busy. It's all you have to do. It's easy, isn't it? Um, Junk food, processed foods, not good for the cells. The zombie cells love it, but not the good cells. So, I think I think that's it. I think you've had enough and you're probably ready to close your books and get out of the biology lab, right? Bye-bye, nanny teacher. Think about it. It is an exciting thing to think about it. I hope it wasn't too deep. Um, zombie cells are real and this drug someday is coming when a lot of you are going to have the benefits of it and 95 will be the new 65. You're going to be living longer, much longer than, than maybe Moose and myself will, but it's going to be exciting for you people and for you youth and your, ch well, let's say your children, your grandchildren. Think of what a wonderful thing it is. Please don't think of this as something Nanny um, dreamt up in her head. There's real research on all this. So I hope that those of you who have not subscribed might like to join our family. And those of you who watch us all the time, thank you so much. I have to tell you one thing. I've been having trouble with my computer where my comments are disappearing the minute that I give you a heart or try and say something. Now, maybe that's just in my studio, but maybe you're still seeing them. I hope I can get some help on that soon. Give me a suggestion if you think. It's the comments that seem to be disappearing from my, my YouTube studio for me to see. So, I love you all. Think about it. No more zombies. Sounds good to me. I love you all. Bye for now.